Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about the most common mistakes in how you pass your submission for the third project of the Udacity Front End Nano Degree, the Weather Journal app. Now, a little preview about this project is this project is considered to be the most important project because you will use this project as a starter code for the following projects. Okay? So you really need to pay the most attention creating this project and should be really comfortable developing it. So your submission will be evaluated based on three different sections. The project environment setup, the APIs and routes, and finally the dynamic user interface. Now let's talk about the project environment setup section. So in this specification, it states that you should have Node and Express installed on your local machine, and the project should require an Express and create an instance of their app. Okay. So a most common mistake here is the student won't have the Express installed in the backend.json file. So the, your reviewer will actually need to install it manually. Now this is a common mistake. You should have expressed already installed in your package.json file so all the packages and dependencies will be installed user npm install command okay the second specification state that you should have course and the podi parser packages installed in your local machine now another common mistake is that the student won't actually have course and body parser packages installed in the um, package.json file so the reviewer will actually need to install it manually. Now this is a common mistake. You should have both of them installed in the package.json file so that the reviewer will be able to install it using npm install command. Now the search specification in this section state that your local server should be running and producing feedback. Now, a common mistake in this specification is you won't be having a feedback produced while your server is running. So you need to have some sort of feedback so your reviewer will know that your local server is running correctly. The fourth and final specification state that you should create an API credential on weather and openweathermap.com. Now, of course, we're going to see all of this implemented in the next videos, but a little preview is you should head to this open, uh, openweathermap.com and actually create your own credential. You're going to create an account and you're going to take the credentials and you're going to use it locally in your project. Now, let's talk about the APIs and routes section. In this specification, it says that there should be a JavaScript object named project data. Now, a common, a common mistake in this section is the student won't have a JavaScript object. They would have an array. Of course, this is wrong. This is a huge common mis uh, mistake in this project. You should only have a JavaScript object. You shouldn't have an array. The second specification states that your personal API key should be saved in a const variable. Now, another common mistake is this is going to be uh, this is going to be a let variable or, or a var variable. Now, of course, this is a mistake. You should have it only as a const variable. You should have it as a let variable or a var variable. You should only have it in a const variable. Now, another point is that your API variable should be passed as a parameter for the fetch function. Of course, we can see this implemented in the code. And finally, that the data should be successfully returned from the external API. Now, th what this means is that your data should successfully return from the open weather map. Okay? The search specification in this section states that your get route sorry, your get route function should actually have two arguments. The first argument will be the string naming your route, and the second argument should be a callback function to return the, the JS object. 
Now the JS obje uh, object is of course the, uh, the project data which will actually serve as your, as your endpoint. So a common mistake in this specification is the student won't actually have these exact two parameters or arguments. Okay, you should only you should really stick to this specification and only pass the route and the callback function as arguments for the get function. Now the first specification state that you should have an async function to fetch the data from the app endpoint. So what this really means is that you should have an async function in in the client side, which is going to be the app.js file that will get the data from the endpoint, which we already created in the server side, which is your server.js file. Now the fifth and last specification state that you need to make sure that in your server.js file you need to be able to add an entry in the post function. Now, a huge common mistake here is the fact that the student will pass the entire request body and not the actual entry. So, what entry really means? This is a huge indication that this specification needs you to use va uh, value pairs, okay? So, of course, we're going to see the difference in the code, but a little preview is instead of calling, uh, sorry, instead of using something like request.body, we'll be using something like data.feeling or data.data or, sorry, data.date or data.temperature. This, uh, this is called value pairs. Of course, we're going to see this actually implementa uh, implemented in the the code and we're gonna see the difference. Another point here is the client side should be a fun uh, should have a function that will take the URL in the object. Now another another common mistake is that the fetch function won't actually have the URL to make a post in the the object. It would only have the URL or it's going to only have the object. Of course, this is a common mistake. You should avoid that. You should pass both the URL and the object. And finally, that the server side should have its own function that will get the data from the client side and add it as an entry. Now, of course, this is an indication also to use value pairs. And we can see how this is implemented in the next videos. Now, let's talk about the dynamic user interface. So in this specification, it states that you should have an, an input element with a placeholder property set to this. And actually, this specification is already already um, implemented to you in the starter code. So this is a huge indication that you shouldn't alter it in any way. You should keep it as it is. And of course, we're going to see this in the starter code in the next videos. This specification is also implemented in the starter code, right? So what this really means is you should keep it as it is and you shouldn't alter it or change anything in the index.html file. Now the third specification state that you should add an event listener to the HTML button, which is of course generate, generated to you in the starter code using vanilla JavaScript. Now, a huge common mistake is that student will add the event listener using something other than vanilla JavaScript, which is a huge mistake. You should avoid that, and you should only use vanilla JavaScript in adding your event listener to the button. The first and last specification is that you need to update the user interface with the new data that you are importing from the app, or sorry, from the API, okay? So what this really means is you need to add an async function in the app.js file and use the inner.html uh, property to set the data. Okay, so thank you very much for watching.